What's up everyone, I'm Alan Thrall here at Untamed Strength Gym in Sacramento, California. And I'm excited to announce I'll be competing at Strongman Corporation Nationals uh, 2021 in October. So this whole week, I'm gonna take you along for the ride and show you the events. I'd be a strong man. First, roll up your pantyhose. Put your hair in a bun. Strong man bun. Apply your lotion. It rubs the lotion on its skin. Oh, uh, <laughs> is that what it is? Yes. And uh, apply a corset. Event number one, Strongman Corporation Nationals. Day one is gonna be log cleaning press. Max log cleaning press. I'm not sure of the specifics of the rules. Maybe I can read into it, but you have three attempts. And I'm not sure if we get to pick our own weight. So if we say, hey, I want 270, I want 280 and then 290. Or if they start at a certain weight and do even jumps. So sometimes in a competition, weight starts at 200. And then we'll go 20 pound jumps, 220, 240, 260. And it's auction style, so you just jump in whenever you want. This is my high school prom date. So you wanna turn it around like this. Right behind her like you're slow dancing. Just like that. Hundred eighty pound prom date. Okay, so today is my favorite day, strongman event day. So I'm not doing really any uh, assistance exercises, just all events for nationals. Today is my competition log press day, so I'm doing uh, competition style split jerk. taking your drunk prom date home. <laughs> 240 pounds empty. There was a time in Strongman where this is a, a big dog log. This was one of the few manufacturers who made a log. So you'd go to strongman competitions or find equipment in a strongman gym, and like this was the only log they had, 240 pounds. So you, it was like a huge deal to compress the log. Now, uh, I remember like in 2010 or something, they came out with a log, 75 pound log, real fitness. And so now they have this light, it's like 50 pound logs. So you can train on it. Like all these logs, we have 10 logs, they're all different weights, but it used to just be one weight and that was really heavy. Day one, wheelbarrow deadlift. are a thing of beauty. 100 pound deep dish plates. So, wheelbarrow deadlift. This is it. 
This wheelbarrow was made by Gorilla Strength USA. And it's like a trap bar deadlift because it's a side handle deadlift. The pick is pretty low. It's about, I'd say, I think it's like nine inches, which is what a barbell is off the ground. So the pick, it feels like nine inches at least. That's what she's saying. But uh, the pick is pretty low. Trap bar deadlift, but it's a little more like a car deadlift because you're not just standing up and down vertically. You're leaning back a little bit, but you don't want to lean back as hard as you would with a car deadlift frame because there's wheels. I think it's funny when I work with someone who's brand new to weight training and uh, they will, uh, they'll ask, they'll see someone deadlifting in the gym and they'll be like, wow, you know, how much is that? And I'm like, that's uh, 345. And they're like, how did you know that? You know, like I, I, as if I see it, I'm like, it's like all the numbers add up, I'm like 345 pounds. There's just landmarks, you know, you can see three plates is 315 and then 10 and 5, 13, you know, whatever. So you see these landmarks. So when I ask them, like, hey, you know, I work in front of the first time, how much, how much do you normally squat? And they're like, well, uh, the barbell's 45, and then uh, a 45 pound plate, and then another 45 pound plate, and they like add it up from zero every time. Uh, so I'm like, just know your landmarks. 95, 135, 185, 225. Oh, four plates and a 25, that's 455. He'd asked me, he was like, Hey, so the barbell weighs 45 pounds. Uh, should I be including that in my weight? And I'm like, yeah, dude. I'm like, you're lifting the bar, right? And he was like, I've been counting, been listing weights without the bar included. Like weight that was added, you know, like I did a 200 pound squat because he put 200 pounds on. And I'm like, no, dude, that bar weighs something. So you, you squat 245, not 200. <laughs> oh, not bad at all. I made a video for my channel. I'll link it. Uh, how to throw a sandbag. So if you don't have sandbags, well, they're easy to make. Just get a bag of something, a bag of sand, some sort of bag, and then fill it with sand. But uh, to do this or to train this without any sandbags, I would say uh, medicine ball throws, one arm dumbbell snatches. So you take a dumbbell, one arm. Here, you could do a little bit of a swing, but just more of a squat. But heavy dumbbell snatches. If you're proficient with barbell Olympic stuff, power snatches. So just a hang, power snatch, high hang, power snatch also will help with this stuff. So this competition is pretty heavy. Obviously it's nationals. Some of the best strongman competitors in the United States competing. Um, but it's just, everything's pretty heavy. Even the axle clean and press for reps is still pretty heavy. I'm hoping for one, two, three, four reps probably. Uh, max log, um, the, the wheelbarrow deadlift is very heavy. The yoke is heavy, everything's heavy. Uh, so my training kind of has to reflect that. I can't always hang out in the eight, 10, 12 range rep range. So my uh, overhead, I'm frequently trying to put, you know, near maximum weights overhead. And, uh, you know, I'm still keeping higher reps in my training just to round out my training. Um, and because I think the volume is helpful leading up to a competition, but uh, trying to acclimate to heavier weights. And so today I'm doing axle jerks from the monolith, or from the, uh, the 
the jerk blocks, which uh, Ben Clarida calls the weightlifter's monolift. ugly but got it. I think it was uh, Cal Strength who said that the jerk is all about how bad you want to get under the bar and I couldn't agree more. You got to want to get under that bar, push yourself under aggressively and as, I, as the weight gets heavy, as I get a little bit scared or intimidated or as I'm tired, I just want to kind of catch it in a really tall position and then I can't jerk it. So even that one, I just didn't push myself down as aggressively. I didn't catch down in a low position, um, which made the press even harder. But you gotta want to get under the barbell. All right, so Punch Nugget's not behind the camera. And the reason is, he's also training for nationals. So I don't wanna give away all my secrets. I don't want him recording me and knowing everything that I'm doing. Uh, just kidding. He's also uh, getting ready for nationals, so I want to leave him alone so he can do his own thing. Also, my boy Chris on the other side of the camera, trying to get some, uh, trying to get some, trying to dabble in the fitness world. So here he is, an untamed strength, recording some fitness. Things that are important in my training, but less important than uh, the competition lifts. Squats, bench press, even strict press, and some accessory stuff. So for squats, it's not a tested event, it's not a competition event. So I'm not too worried about the weight on the bar, honestly. Same with bench press. I don't get wrapped around, you know, I hope I can do 10 pounds more than this, or hope I can do more than last week. It's really just about effort and uh, getting some leg training in. I'm not concerned with the weight. I'm just thinking, how is this movement going to help my other movements? So I'm actually thinking about how it's making me better. It's a relief because I'm not, I can focus on the things that matter, those six events I'm training for, and I can worry about those ones. I don't have to worry about those, plus my squat. My squat's not doing great. Don't worry about my bench, worry about my strict press. I don't have to worry about all those things. It's just a, uh, just to supplement the other movements. It's hard to get centered on this bar. And there have been plenty of times where I clean an axle off center. And all I have to, th I just have to react. And that's really all I'm focused on. I'm not, I'm not gonna come down, feel it uneven and drop it. I've just gotta react to whatever situation I'm in. So when I unrack the bar here and I'm a little bit off center and I'm just, hey, I'm gonna go for it. You know what I mean? Just overcome uh, the little bit of challenge. Strongman Corporation Nationals is October 15th, I believe and it's in Virginia, so a long way to travel for me. Um, now, Nationals, the way Nationals works is, throughout the year, throughout the past year, if you've competed in a Strongman Corporation competition, any competition across the United States, and you won first place, uh, you qualify to go to Nationals. So all of the competitors have placed first place at a smaller local competition. So really, getting into it is not particularly hard. Um, you might go to a local competition and you're, it's you and you know, one or two other people. And so it's easier to win first. Um, so anyways, it doesn't uh, necessarily mean that you were invited or you uh, qualified with a certain lift or anything like that. <clears throat> it's really just you won a first place in a local competition, so you get to go uh, do your best at nationals. Day two, this competition is a two-day competition. And on the second day, axle cleaner press. Max reps in a minute, so there's a set weight and you will do as many reps as you can in uh, one minute. At Nationals, like I said earlier, you can uh, clean this however you want. And uh, before I was doing a continental clean, which is where you grab with a mix grip, get it up to your stomach, switch the underhand to overhand, and then pop it up to your shoulders. I can do that, but it's not very consistent. If I'm doing a bunch of reps in a minute, sometimes I won't blow high enough and it'll slide down my body and hit my belt 
or it slides down and then I have to get it from here up to my shoulders, which is just uh, difficult and it consumes a lot of energy. So the zombie clean, because I enjoy doing cleans with a barbell, I figured I might as well just try the zombie clean. And I actually feel like it's a little bit more efficient and uh, saves a little bit of energy. I don't have to mess with the bar on my stomach for so long. So a zombie clean is where you grab the bar with a mixed grip and then I'll jump the weight up. I'll fling my elbow around like a normal uh, power clean position and I'll throw my arm out like that. And I just hold the weight with one arm out right on my shoulders. It takes a lot of practice. When I first started doing this, it took a lot of mental focus. To, beforehand I would say, right hand shooting out, right hand shooting out. Because I would go and then I'd kind of forget which hand's supposed to go out because it happened so fast. Some people will ask if I'm worried about hurting my bicep with the zombie clean. And I mean, it's no different than a continental clean, a mixed grip clean. No, I'm not. I'm bending my arm the same on both arms. And uh, so really, I don't feel like my bicep's getting trained more on one side than the other. It's a problem when you're deadlifting maximum weight, picking up every pound that you possibly can, and you're bending your arms. That's just putting way more stress on your bicep. But uh, this is fairly light for me, so I'm not worried to worry about the submaximal pulling. Also, I do this often, so my bicep is used to it. Uh, I'm not, you know, never done this movement before, so I'm gonna go in and max out my zombie clean on day one. This is just, my, my arms have become accustomed to it, so I'm not worried about hurting my bicep. The second event on day two, I think, I could be wrong about this, but I know on day two, it's a wheelbarrow carry or a wheelbarrow push. So, for the deadlift, you'll be facing away from the tires. For the carry, you'll be facing the tires. You'll pick it up like the traditional wheelbarrow and roll it down. Kind of thing, I'm not uh, throwing shade at anyone, but I kind of feel like these events were lazily picked. It was like, which, which events can we do? Use the fewest amount of implements, uh, set up and reset fastest. Let's just do a deadlift with a wheelbarrow. And hell, it's here, so why don't we just do a carry with it too? It's kind of how I feel like the events were planned. But I understand that really, at really big events like this, they're long days, it's a lot of competitors. So you can't have like, you know, four implement uh, medleys. Because you, you know, and have like five lanes of people. That's a whole lot of implements that run back and forth. Volunteers are running all over the place, so it just takes longer. So having these one implement events, I think it's just easier logistically to get an event moving smoothly. So. I think this is the last event. Day two, Strongman Corporation Nationals, Yoke Walk. Pick the weight up, carry it down however far, 50 feet. Fastest time wins. Yoke is my least favorite Strongman event. I just don't, I'm just not crazy about it. Uh, but I need to improve it and get used to carrying really heavy weight on my back. Uh, before California Strongest Man, I was working with just over like right around 600, 650 most days. The heaviest I did was just a little bit over 700 for 50 feet, I think with like two drops. I was able to go to California Strongest Man and do 800, 50 feet, no drops. So somewhat, you know, I need to get used to lifting heavy weights, but at the same time, I can be okay with lifting sub maximum weights for speed and then just hope that on competition day with all the height uh, and all the training leading up to it, I can bust out a heavy yoke. All right guys, thanks for tuning in. I will probably update you with another video or two before nationals just to update you on how prep is going. Uh, shout out to Chris on the other side of the camera for using his equipment and uh, uh, taking some of his experience into the YouTube world so we kind of work together. Thanks for watching and always remember, Trend on Time!